It's time now for a look at some of the day's top business news with France 24's Cole Stangler. Cole, you are starting with the European Union, which is going to unveil a set of measures to tackle rising energy costs. That's right, Aaron. Today, the European Commission is preparing to release what it calls a toolbox of measures with natural gas prices more than tripling this year and with a winter that could send demand soaring. The EU wants to take action before bills get even higher. Today, Brussels is expected to urge members to temporarily cut national taxes on energy. Other potential items could include a short-term reduction in the value-added tax, as well as support for so-called energy checks for households in need. The issue is expected to dominate an EU leaders' summit next week. That issue is also going to be front row and center at the IMF's uh, annual meetings this week, Cole. Yeah, according to the chief economist of the International Monetary Fund, uh, energy prices likely to remain high over the coming months. She said they could come down by early next year, though the upcoming winter season could be challenging. I think a, a very bad scenario would be one indeed where you have an extremely severe winter in the Northern Hemisphere. So the demand for power uh, goes up quite a bit. At the same time, we don't resolve uh, the supply problems or the help it in the near term. And it's still fall, but coal already many households in France are bracing for higher energy bills. That's right. According to one poll, about six in 10 say they've turned down their heating amid rising prices. Well, some are finding new sources of energy for their homes. Shoei Sipon and our colleagues at France 2 have more. As energy prices soar, people's electricity bills have become an increasingly major expense. This couple of pensioners have electric heating. Overall, they pay 1,200 euros per year. Our bills have doubled, so we've decided to change our habits. They've changed their home's thermal insulation, bought a more efficient radiator. They turn off the heating when temperatures are not too cold and keep it off in rooms they rarely use. It's on in the bathroom when we bathe, in the kitchen, in the living room. But it's turned off in the rooms and everywhere else. According to a poll, about a fifth of the French say they're cold in their homes during winter. Some because they're badly insulated or because they don't have the money to pay for more heating. Some families have changed their heating system to cut costs. This home had an oil-fired heating system and an additional wood pellet stove. They'll be replaced by a heat pump. The rooms are also kept at lower temperatures than in previous years. If it's cold, we wear an extra sweater and we always shut the doors to avert drafts. Almost half of the French aged 18 to 34 say they struggle to settle their bills and turn off their heating as often as possible. Moving on now to the day's trading action. European markets in the red uh, at the open. Shares on the CAC 40 here in Paris down about a third of a percent. As you can see there, it says investors wait for key inflation data coming from the U.S. later today. Those figures could encourage the Fed to move to raise the cost of borrowing sooner than expected. Uh, Asian markets, meanwhile, in mixed territory. Uh, that says data showed an increase in Chinese exports. The Hang Seng uh, is closed, but gains in Shanghai and in Seoul. Next up, Cole, Apple is likely to cut production on its latest iPhone uh, because of an increasingly global problem. Yeah, according to Bloomberg, the firm will be producing just 80 million iPhone 13s by the end of the year. It's down from the 90 million that was initially expected. It's due to the global computer chip shortage with Apple suppliers Broadcom and Texas Instruments reportedly struggling to hit delivery targets. Chip shortage goes well beyond the tech giant, though. It's hit everyone from producers of video game consoles to the world's auto industry. And finally, from you, Cole, the U.S. Congress has moved to stave off the risk of what could have been an unprecedented default. Yeah, following the Senate last week, the House of Representatives has improved a short-term increase in the country's borrowing ceiling. It means the U.S. government can continue to fully pay its bills into early December, taking a potential catastrophe for the global economy off the table, at least for now. That may well pave the way for another showdown at the end of the year when the debt limit will need to be increased. Uh, Aaron, that's also in Congress, will be voting to avoid a government shutdown and also potentially major spending bills. So shaping up to be a pretty busy December in Washington. Quite a bit of political brinksmanship in Washington yeah. as well, Cole. Absolutely. We will be following that as it evolves. Thank you, Cole Stangler, with that business update.